Hey everyone, so here I go again for another video, the last one of today, which is about the transit method, which is a technique uh, to measure, to measure, sorry, to find extrasolar planets or exoplanets, so planets around another star. So transit methods, uh, I have here, this is how it should work, this is how it actually is, the expectation versus reality, but basically how it works is you Imagine that you have a planet going around the star and that star planet system is in our line of sight in such a way that if the planet goes in right in front of the star is going to do a little bit of an eclipse on the star. So the brightness of the star uh, that, that you get on Earth decreases during a certain amount of time due to the planet uh, making that eclipse so being in front of the star. So this is how it works. So I have here several planets, for example, around this star, and each color corresponds to a certain dip in the brightness. So that's the relative brightness of what I get from Earth, and this is uh, over a certain amount of time. And as they say, transit durations are great, greatly um, uh, exaggerated. So the purple planet, for example, so that planet is pretty big uh, comparing to the other planets also because it's further away, eclipses the star a little bit more. So this one is going to cover the star more, so the brightness increases the mo decreases sorry, the most, okay? And I see this happening exactly the same type of decrease in brightness over and over again. So this is something that is happening over and over again. Possibly there is a planet around the star. So this is how the transit method works. Let's go on the blue planet. That one, also a little bit bigger, but also further away from the star, so it makes more of an eclipse. And there is here the dip in the brightness, which is always the same for the same planet. And then again, it happens over and over again. And if it happens over and over, I think, okay, come on, I definitely have a body around that star, possibly a planet, so is, is it going to be an extrasolar planet? and you keep doing observations to confirm that there is an extrasolar planet, you can use other techniques like radio velocity, for example, to confirm that it is an extrasolar planet. Finally, let's go on the orange one, this tiny one closer to the star. It makes a tinier bit, okay, because it doesn't cover as much as the star. And now let's look at all the lines together. The orange one is the closest one to the star. The repetition of the dip that I have in the brightness occurs more frequently because the planet is, of course, going to obscure the star more often than, for example, the purple one. So this transit method is going to give me, just by looking at the light curves, information about how many planets I may have in there, Okay, and I need to be careful, you need to say may. I mean, of course it can give you information about how many planets it has there, but we say may because, you know, it could be that there is a planet that is actually just, the orbit is so oblique, oblique that you cannot even have it to cover the star, or it can be this, uh, the covering of the star can be confused with noise, which I'll go in a second. And then this one, the purple one, I mean, Possibly it's quite big, or it could be that it covers the star like much more. And look, the period of this orbit is not as large as the other ones. So you get a lot of information about the system. And it works really well with multi-planet systems because uh, you're going to have different dips. Again, this is an example of the Klep Kepler 11 system, which was found using, guess what, the Kepler Space Telescope, which was sent to space just for look for planets, okay, using the transit methods. So this is the data, and different colors, again, correspond to different planets, and you can see that according to the how much my brightness decreased, I can figure out that it, that is the signal, that is the pattern that my planet does, okay? Again, you also get information about the, the size of the planet, the mass, the orbital period, in terms of how close together these dips happen. And let's look at this example. Sometimes three planets can be looking, uh, going around the star or in front of the star. So here, here we go. At times, you may have um, some not so frequent, uh, frequent events where the brightness decreases much more. Now, problem about this method is that Again, this is the expectation, really nice curved lines or uh, straight lines, really. Uh, and this is the reality. I mean, there is a lot of ups and downs, okay? And why, you know what? Could this be a planet in here? Could this be a planet? Could that be a planet? So sometimes you don't know things for sure, okay? So the 
of course as any technique is not great is not perfect i mean it's great actually but it's not perfect and sometimes is it really a planet in there okay so you can look at other techniques all right so i'll put the link of this video uh in the description this is really just seeing i don't know if this is even from the video i don't think so but it's really just seeing a planet going in front of the star reducing its brightness and moving away from the star and that's all that the video is it's like you know about 10 seconds something like it and you can also decrease the speed of the video if you want to see something that is very interesting how fast how steep this line is is going to give you an idea of the radius of the planet which is going to be super important for something else that i'll tell you in a second so transit method when a planet passes directly between an observer and the star it orbits it blocks some of the star's light so the light curve indicates this by dropping in brightness okay the luminosity of the star is the same it still emits the same amount of energy per second however the brightness that i receive here on earth changes okay decreases when the planet is blocking the light the size and the length of a transit event can tell us a lot about the planet that is causing the transit for example, bigger planets, they block more light, so the light curve is a little bit deeper. Further away planets, they take longer to orbit and pass in front of the star, so the longer the transit event, okay? So you get a lot of information just by looking at the light curves. And again, this method is biased towards a certain type of planet. Think about it. Bigger planets, if the planet is bigger, it blocks more of the light. I do not confuse the deep in the brightness with noise, okay? And obviously, planets, they are close to the stars because they are going to pass around the star more often. So I can more easily find out that that is a planet. I don't have to wait 10 years until the next transit event and say, oh, yeah, that's going to be a planet. OK, so the transit method, just like the radial or Doppler velocity method, they are biased towards hot Jupiters, which are planets. They are quite massive and they are traveling very close or orbiting very close to the star. OK, so multiple planets is actually quite good for multiple planets. And again, another example in here. OK, the combined light curves can give us the same information as a single one. So it just takes more time for us to pick up and uh, pick out which planet is in the data, which planet is contributing on how much on that dip in the light curve. OK, and the transit method isn't just useful for finding planets. It can also give us information about the composition of the planet's atmosphere or its temperature okay and this is again when i combine data because i have a transit event and i can easily get the radius for from what is the steepness of my curve when i get the uh, the transit event then and i know how massive the planet can be by looking at the dip then i can look at the density because mass is uh, density is mass over volume right so i can have an idea of the density of the planet i can figure out if it's a rocky planet or a gaseous planet and then just by looking at the transit event i can also take up or pick up data about the atmosphere of the planet okay and there it is when an extra planet passes in front of its star some of the starlight passes through its atmosphere so the scientists can analyze the colors of this light in order to get valuable clues about its composition uh, the composition of the atmosphere using this method they found everything from methane to water vapor on other planets and why is this important well if a planet has uh, methane and water vapor in their atmospheres uh, they have an atmosphere that is at least a little bit similar to ours so maybe they can harbor life maybe they can have this amount of greenhouse if uh, effect or uh, yeah uh, that is enough to keep the planet warm even if it's not facing the star at that particular time okay the greenhouse effect is something that is actually without it we wouldn't have life on earth it's just that if it's an extreme greenhouse effect then is going to cause global warming okay but this can be in another video so uh, and this is very important and uh, let's think about it i mean we have so many techniques to find out planets they are so successful why did we send a telescope to space for this well 
if we're looking for planets that could be like our own Earth, because who knows, maybe we want to go there after we completely ruin this one, then we want a planet that could harbor life. So that is the interest, okay? It doesn't mean that the interest is completely about, you know, finding a second home when we destroy this one, which we're doing quite at a very high speed. But um, it's not just about that, but it could be also uh, a little bit more scientific and knowing how does life evolve in a different planets, okay? Or planets that have this atmosphere. Can it uh, evolve in other atmospheres? What type of life I can get there? But um, yeah, kind of, you know, I'm, I'm not going to judge anything. So that is it. Uh, really for the transit methods, uh, which is uh, another way, a quite successful way to find extrasolar planets. So radio velocity was the big one in the beginning and it's still fine. I mean, it's just that we don't have a telescope in space at the moment looking for this. And the transit is also very successful. Um, it does have its problems. It needs to be edge on. Planets is, uh, are biased towards hot Jupiter, so close and big mass massive planets. However, um, so I said it was very successful. It had its bias. I don't remember what I was going to say. But yeah, that's another method. Next, I'll go on microlensing, which is a very interesting one. So up to my next video. Be happy and healthy. Bye.